which are environmental and various other factors which may lead to development of schizophrenia. So let's talk about the risk factors which are occurring during the early development. First important risk factor is the paternal age. So it is seen that higher risk of schizophrenia may be three to four times may be seen in offsprings of father who are older than 50 years at the time of conception. So a patient who has developed schizophrenia, let us say, his father, you know, when this person was conceived, his father's age was more than 50 years of age. So there is an increased risk of schizophrenia. So first is paternal age. Now, there are certain genetic theories, you know, regarding this higher risk of schizophrenia in the age, depending on the age of the father at the time of conception. So two of these theories are that the advancing age of the father may result in accumulation of de novo mutations in the germ cells which subsequently may result into schizophrenia and second is the advancing age of the father may interfere with the DNA methylation of gene expression. So there may be certain abnormalities in expression of some of the genes which subsequently may lead to development of schizophrenia. So these are some theories which are given regarding the paternal age as the risk factor. Second environmental factor occurring in the early developmental period is the season of birth. In what season the child has taken birth, again that may also be related with the development of schizophrenia in the later life. So it is seen statistically significant association between winter birth and later development of schizophrenia and it, this is especially seen in the northern hemisphere. So many studies have seen this association between the season of birth. So winter season or winter birth is one of the you know season in which it is associated with higher risk of schizophrenia. Now this effect seems to be greater in those who are born in urban as compared to the rural settings. Again, when we talk about hypothesis, what could be the reason you know of development of schizophrenia related to winter birth? So one of the hypotheses is that there is exposure to intrauterine you know, viral infections around the time of birth in the winter season. And second is again variation in light, temperature, weather or certain external toxins related to the winter season. Again, so these are some of the hypotheses related to the season of birth. Next is pregnancy and birth complications. So certain compl complications during pregnancy and birth that is pre and perinatal complications has also you know, been associated with increased risk of schizophrenia in the later life. So some of these complications may be divided you know, as abnormal fetal growth or development, then complications of pregnancy and complications of delivery. So these complications have also been associated with development of schizophrenia. So abnormal fetal growth and development such as there is low birth weight, there is congenital malformation or there is small head circumference that is microcephaly at birth. So this may be associated then complications of pregnancy such as bleeding, preeclampsia, diabetes, RH incompatibility again may also lead to development of schizophrenia in the later life and complications of delivery such as asphyxia, uterine atony or emergency caesarean sections. So these are some of the birth and pregnancy complications which may lead to development of schizophrenia and in fact it is you know taken together these findings implicate that overall there is a risk increased risk of hypoxia which may be the underlying reason for later on development of schizophrenia. Many studies when they identify these factors you know singly or individually this risk may not be seen as high but again as a total combination of these complications it may be associated with higher risk of development of schizophrenia because of the pre and perinatal complications. Then other prenatal risk factors which may lead to development of schizophrenia, one is infections and infection that is seen influenza infection during pregnancy may lead to development of schizophrenia later life especially you know studies done during the 1957 influenza pandemic they have seen that during the second trimester there is an increased risk of development of schizophrenia if the lady who is pregnant during the second trimester develops influenza infection. Then there are other prenatal infection exposure also have been seen to be associated with schizophrenia such as rubella, 
toxoplasmosis, polio virus and also certain other common respiratory infections have also been associated with development of schizophrenia. So one of the important ones is influenza infection. Then other prenatal factors, some of them we have discussed like rhesus incompatibility or RH incompatibility, stress during pregnancy again, it has also been associated with development of schizophrenia such as death of a spouse during pregnancy again it may lead to development of schizophrenia nutritional deficiencies in the pregnant lady okay again studies have been done during famine periods which have shown that later on the child who is born may develop schizophrenia so these are some of the prenatal risk factors which may lead to development of schizophrenia so those were the risk factors which were seen in the early developmental phase then there may be certain risk factors which may occur slightly later on maybe in childhood and adolescent which may again increase the risk of development of schizophrenia so let's talk about those factors so first factor is urban birth and upbringing now it is seen that there is a twofold increased risk in urban than in rural settings so urban exposure in fact prior to the onset of illness is more important. So someone who is living in the urban setting before the onset of illness, that is a more important risk factor rather than being there in the urban setting at the time of onset of the illness. And especially the first 15 years are most critical. So in the first 15 years, if one is there most of the time in the urban setting, then it is seen to be in higher risk of developing schizophrenia as compared to the rural setting. Now, possible neighborhood level social processes which may play a role or which may influence in the risk of schizophrenia may be there such as ethnic density. So, ethnic density is basically percentage composition of a particular ethnic group in the given geographical area. So, higher the ethnic density that is higher the percentage of people of the same ethnic group in that area lower is the risk of development of schizophrenia in that particular ethnic group. So factors such as interpersonal trust or mutual aid may play a role and there is a decreased risk of schizophrenia or psychotic illnesses in those ethnic groups. So urban birth and upbringing is one of the risk factors. Second is migration. So again migration is seen to be a risk factor for schizophrenia. So there is increased rates of schizophrenia in migrants, especially among the second generation who are born in the new homeland. So let us say people migrated to the to a new place and their second generation which is born there in the new homeland, they are even at a higher risk of development of schizophrenia. Now, so some of the possible explanations could be that there may be social adverse experiences which may be there which may which have increased the risk of development of schizophrenia and another possible explanation is a possible gene environment interaction so there were certain genetic vulnerability and certain environmental factors which have now combined and which has led to increase in risk of development of schizophrenia third risk factor in the childhood or adolescent period is one of the important substance that is cannabis use. So it is seen that association of prior cannabis use can lead to subsequent psychosis and development of schizophrenia. Now many times in patients of schizophrenia there may be increased cannabis use but you are talking about before the onset of illness if there is a prior exposure of cannabis that can lead to development of schizophrenia or psychotic illness. Now, tentative evidence also suggests that there is certain specific polymorphisms that also may moderate this association of cannabis and development of schizophrenia. One of them is if someone is homozygous for the COMT, catechol O methyl transferase valine allele, it is seen that they are at increased risk of schizophrenia if they are exposed to cannabis. So, if someone has valine allele of COMT gene and the person consumes cannabis, they are at higher risk of development of schizophrenia as compared to someone who has methionine allele of the COMT gene. So again, there are certain genetic factors that may also play a role in development of schizophrenia after cannabis exposure. Next is stressful life events and early childhood trauma. So stressful life events and childhood traumas may also lead to development of schizophrenia such as so there is an increased risk of 
those who are exposed to early childhood trauma such as there is sexual physical or emotional abuse or there is neglect so all these traumatic experiences stressful experiences may later on also may develop schizophrenia so these were some of the important environmental and certain other factors which may play a role in development of schizophrenia